The Cunard Line's great Edwardian-era ship, Aquitania, affectionately referred to as the Ship Beautiful, was known as, well, a beautiful ship. But she is also known for having an unusual forward superstructure, which, in the minds of some, inhibited her purported beauty. While the towering, bold, and surprisingly angular face of Aquitania certainly made her unmistakable in the harbor and today in photographs, I can understand the disillusionment that many people have with this famous ship. There was a time when I had little appreciation for Aquitania, largely for this exact reason. To be clear, my fondness for Cunard's Grand Lady has been growing over the years, and I can now say that she is one of my favorite ships. But not only was Aquitania's bridge unusual and controversial, but it was seemingly always changing. With every photograph you look at, it seems, the bridge and the surrounding features have changed. And usually not for the better, unfortunately. The many changes to Aquitania's bridge are often attributed to a flaw or oversight in the ship's original design. It is said that her forecastle deck, essentially her bow, was so long that her officers had difficulty with visibility, especially when the ship was in close quarters, like when they were in port. This is certainly true to an extent, but it should be noted that Aquitania's designers knew that this could be an issue from the start. This realization is actually the reason for Aquitania's awkward forward appearance from the day of her completion. You see, the ship was built with two bridges in a way. The main bridge was located all the way forward on the boat deck, and it included an enclosed wheelhouse in the center and two open-air sections on either side of the wheelhouse. And there was a slight wing on either side to help with rearward visibility. Even this was a little odd as the open air portions of the main bridge were not weather decks in that they were covered at the top, only being open to the elements looking forward and at the extreme edges. The reason for this though was the need for a second bridge above the main one. This is the root of Aquitania's overall unusual look. The upper bridge was completely exposed to the elements, and its primary purpose was to serve as an elevated vantage point for officers when the ship was in port or otherwise needed to see around the ship's bow. Even though it wasn't perfect from a practical standpoint or even an aesthetic one, I think that most people would agree that this is when Aquitania looked her best. But I rather like Aquitania's original design. Unfortunately, this compromise proved insufficient in terms of safety and visibility. There wasn't much time for the officers to realize this before World War I started, as Aquitania's maiden voyage was only two months before the outbreak of the war. But once she was pressed into service for the war effort, she was soon involved in a collision with the Leyland liner Canadian, which highlighted the visibility issue of the Aquitania's original configuration. To reduce the risk of further accidents, a temporary and makeshift viewing platform was erected on top of the upper bridge to give officers a better view. Eventually, this temporary arrangement was replaced with a permanent, albeit small, wheelhouse. After the war, Aquitania underwent a much-needed refit to return her to commercial service, and this included the removal of the windows on her original main bridge on the boat deck. They were replaced with smaller portholes. This was probably done for aesthetic reasons and for practicality, as they would be less prone to damage and flooding in bad weather. Aquitania continued in this configuration for her commercial glory years between World War I and the start of the Great Depression. As such, this is how she most often appears in photographs and, as a result, is likely best remembered. In my opinion, this was not a bad look for her, although it was a step down from the original design. Miraculously, Aquitania lived to serve in the Second World War. It was during this remarkable and important service that she saw the last major change to her bridge. While it is difficult to discern exactly when this change took place, it was sometime in or around 1944. The changes involved the expansion of the existing wheelhouse outward and upward. More sheltered space was given to the officers, but the top of the wheelhouse was enclosed by new bulwark which provided an even higher vantage point for viewing over and around the bow. By 1944, Aquitania's continued service was a matter of pure luck and necessity. The appearance of the ship took a backseat to pragmatism, especially in the context of her critical wartime service, in which she carried over a third of a million troops. Still, the soaring height of her superstructure relative to her hull by the end of her career was getting to be a little bit ludicrous, in my humble opinion. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on Aquitania's ever-evolving bridge design.